Sunday, 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 and every other day of the next couple of weeks. Have you ever wanted to layer Draken armor over your already equipped Draken armor? All you have to do is kill one singular monster, but it might take you just a few tries. That's right, people, we were promised a challenge, and if you thought that the regular behemoth was a little bit of a toughie, then prepare to be absolutely floored by the crazy fight that is THE EXTREME BEHEMOTH. If you are wondering what the changes are from regular behemoth, then I am sorry to say that the list is not short, but the most important things are more damage, more health, different areas, and area mechanics, and a flash limit. Behemoth's weak points have stayed exactly the same. The four areas that he goes to have changed ever so slightly, rather than going the crystal path 99% of the time and the fire 1% of the time, Extreme Behemoth turns it around and goes fire 99% of the time and the Crystal Path the 1%. To start off in a familiar way, let's take a look at individual abilities. Shibri... Sh 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 Tornado! This ability is extremely similar to the regular Behemoth, but with a shorter cast time. The main thing to be aware of is that Extreme Behemoth has a 2 flash limit, which means that using them on Charybdis is essentially pointless, as stopping 2 casts of this tornado throughout the fight will not have a noticeable difference at all. Ideally, you will save them for a later point. Unfortunately, but also expectedly, this removes the easiest way of dealing with this mechanic, leaving us with two real alternatives. The first alternative, which is preferable but inconsistent, is to flinch Behemoth during the cast. This will prevent him from finishing whatever he is casting and can be accomplished by beating his big bad head until he complains about it. The second surefire solution is to place the tornadoes at the edge of the room. Now this isn't a way to get rid of the tornadoes so much as it is a way to keep them out of the fight and give yourself the cleanest area possible to fight him in. The hidden third way to deal with Charybdis, which has to happen before the cast even starts, is actually Enmity. If somebody holds Behemoth's Enmity, then he will simply not cast Charybdis. Doesn't matter which zone he is in, if he is angry with one specific person, he just won't do it. Aside from the ways to deal with it, some more general information is that Charybdis lasts a long time. However, it does eventually subside. So while the zone can get hectic, you will never be able to block yourself off completely unless you place those dastardly dust devils in dumb directions. Aside from enmity, Charybdis will be cast in every zone except the third. Same as the regular fight. Make sure you are careful with Rock City Mental around them, as while it will keep you from getting flung away, it can get you killed if you just stand in them like an idiot. Next up is everyone's favorite mother mounting meteor! If you thought that the meteor was a little bit annoying in the regular behemoth fight, then you should probably just avoid this encounter as a whole. As with Charybdis, the Extreme Behemoth has a shorter cast time on the meteor, but on top of that, they now apply Defense Down. Yeah, I know. Devil Joe now has a friend. On top of this, the targeting system has been systematically upgraded as he now targets 3 out of 4 players with meteors, unless a player holds enmity. Dodging this ability can be a little rough, the time between the marker showing up on the floor and the attack hitting is absolutely tiny, and the difference between the way that the attack looks and the hitbox is absolutely massive. The best way to deal with this is to prepare to dodge the second you see the behemoth is casting meteor pop up on your poor little screen. And for the love of all that is extreme, don't you dare drop that pile of literally steaming not so literal shit on your teammates. Pikachu yells in thunder trash! Pikachu! Oh fuck! Oh god! Who on earth told this discount Kieran that he was allowed to pull this out of his pouch of pounding because this move just plain sucks? But it doesn't suck any more than it did in the original Behemoth, it hasn't changed at all. The Ground Eruption, the only attack where Behemoth's face lights up red, has not changed even remotely. The move that replaces Charybdis in Area 3 of the fight, which is the little horn stab bleed grapple, hasn't changed at all. However, the way that you deal with it has changed slightly. This is one of the best times for you to save your 2 flash allowance for. Unless you have a support who is super on point, the player who is hit by this attack will be low, low, low. <laughs> Flashing resets enmity, and if this player is either an abysmal target to have enmity in the first place, or in a terrible position to be having enmity due to their health, this may be a prime opportunity for said flash pods. The Comets! If you remember anything about the original Behemoth, then you know that this rock is your baby. 
The only thing that has changed with this ability and this mechanic as a whole is the amount of them that you will receive. You would get two comets in the first area, one which will drop immediately upon entering, one in the second area, and none in the third area, I know, I know, but don't freak out, I'll explain that later, and three over the course of the final area. Having fought this angry dog so many times I can't count it, at least not on my fingers, I have revised my original positioning map. Ideally, your Charybdis will still be all on one side. However, I no longer believe that putting comets on the other side of the room is your best bet. You want the comets to be as close to the center of the room as possible, so that everybody can reach them no matter where they are when the ecliptic meteor starts casting. For this to work, you want Charybdis on the one side, the comet in the middle, and then Behemoth just away from the comet as best as possible to a side that's not full of tornadoes. And now the one you've all been dreading, the ecliptic meteor itself. If any part of this fight has gotten more extreme for extreme behemoth, it is the ecliptic meteor, which might as well have been renamed the apocalyptic meteor. This new difficulty of the ecliptic meteor isn't really attributed to the meteor itself. On an individual cast basis, the meteor seems to work almost exactly the same way, but with the exception of being in another zone, does seem to save you from it these days. Items will of course still not not work during the cast, so you will for the most part have to deal with it the same way that you have for regular behemoth. Either the new method of leave the zone, which does require you to get quite some distance out of the zone, or the old methods of get behind the comet, or use the jump emote. With a couple of ways to practice, it looks like we finally worked at the exact timing of the jump emote, by the way, which is to start that baby... No, not that baby, we talked about him earlier. The second that you can see the top of the meteor, leave the little death portal. If you and your group can nail the timing of this jump emote, this fight will become about 1000% easier because this mechanic is extremely enhanced entering this encounter. First off on the changes are the addition of the ecliptic meteor in the first zone of the fight. Two comets will drop during this phase. Ecliptic Meteor will end the phase and send him running into Area 2. In Area 2, the Behemoth will drop only one comet, so if he destroys it, you better pray to the gods above that your team knows how to jump. And then to end this phase, he will drop another Meteor. Phase 3 is where it starts to get really interesting. If you do the fight correctly, Extreme Behemoth will not drop a Meteor in Phase 3. Phase 3 is a DPS race, meaning if you pass a certain damage threshold within around 5 minutes, he will peacefully move on to Area 4. However, if you struggle with this and get the absolute crap beaten out of you instead of beating the absolute crap out of him, he will eventually cast an Ecliptic Meteor with zero comets in the zone and attempt to one-shot your entire party and end the hunt. While this probably means that you're going to struggle with a 30 minute overall quest timer even if you survive, you can technically all survive this using correct jump emote timing, so it isn't quite a fail state. In phase 4, assuming you are good enough at this game to even make it this far, you are in for an absolute doozy! In this zone you will have to deal with three ecliptic meteors, that's right, three ecliptic meteors before this angry puppy goes down for the count. Each meteor will be preceded by a singular comet, and if you let these get killed, you are in for a very, very rough time, which is unfortunately only one stage of very further than you would be in for otherwise. The unfortunate part of this final zone is that you have to be very careful to not accidentally do so much damage in one burst as to cross two meteor thresholds. In this situation, the behemoth will put down two comets instantly, blow both of them up with the first ecliptic meteor, and then cast another meteor down without a single comet. If this happens to you, all I can do is wish you luck. The other general moves that he will do are almost all the same, with the exception of a new combo. In Area 3, he will start to combo a left paw slam with a shoulder bash, which will absolutely destroy your health bar, and will one-shot someone who isn't particularly well prepared. Now that we have gone back through all of his individual attacks, let's talk about Enmity for a hot minute. A lot of people decided that tanks and supports were entirely unnecessary for the regular version of this fight, and I myself didn't quite see the need for them either. However, with the extreme version, the need becomes a little bit more clear. Extreme Behemoth will cast, cast after cast like no tomorrow, if you let him. He will do his absolute best to stand in one spot and just absolutely rail every single member of your party, and one of the only ways to stop this is to have somebody gain enmity. 
Having someone tank the Extreme Behemoth will result in the disappearance of the entire Charybdis mechanic as he simply refuses to cast it during this state, and it will significantly gimp the existence of the Meteor as he will only fire one Meteor and it will be guaranteed to target the person who is holding his enmity. In fact, every attack that the Behemoth does will be targeted solely at that player with the exception of Comet. If you reach the damage threshold for a Comet to pop up, it will still pick someone at random and come crashing down at their feet. During enmity is the ideal time to deal damage for you damage dealers out there, as his movement patterns will for the most part be completely predictable, as he should only turn to face one player of your party during this time. Safe and weak places include the tail for everyone, the front legs for sharp weapons, and the back legs for blunt weapons, and as usual, you range guys can go fire cluster bombs from the camp or something, whatever you do. If you need to cancel on MIDI either due to your tank being in trouble, or someone who can't handle the heat being in the kitchen, so to say, you can take him out either by using one of your two available flashes, or by applying the paralysis or sleep status. Something that has a somewhat similar effect to enmity in this encounter is mounting. While mounted, Behemoth will not cast any abilities and will simply do one of two moves. He will either roll over on his back or do a little jump forward. While he is a little bit zippy, this provides an excellent window of opportunity for people to absolutely destroy his health bar, and using this mechanic you can potentially skip an entire zone. Whether this is an intentional function or not isn't really what I'm here to discuss, but it is entirely possible to keep Behemoth mounted for an entire phase. If you do not stab him while mounted and your friendly wide range support player over there keeps your stamina topped up, well you can keep him mounted indefinitely. The only ways for you to get kicked off of this mount are if you run out of stamina, if you complete a mount finisher, if the ground team breaks a claw horn or cuts off his tail, or finally, and the most preferable option, he will kick you off if he have reached the damage threshold for this phase. After standing up, he will place any remaining comets for the zone and then immediately cast the ecliptic meteor before prancing his little pansy ass over to the next area. As for support players, nobody will love you more than they will in this fight, and all you need is wide range and enough supplies to sustain your subordinates. The supports are obviously in charge. If you want to be a real kind fellow, you can go full in and grab Mushroomancer, Speed Eating, and Free Meal. But keep in mind that you should grab as many damage skills as you can fit in this build as well, as the damage checks in this fight are tight, and as much as people will love having the healing, it will only do so much to make the overall hunt successful if you are timing out on the quest overall. Now to round it off, let me go over a little itty bitty strategy for you boys and girls. Put Behemoth to sleep under the boulders in the first area. Waking him up with said boulders is worth 5100 damage each. And doing this with both boulders with a little bit of barrel bomb action will straight up skip the first zone. In area two, get a mount. Ideally the person in the tank role will get this mount if you have a tank. Use the mount strategy we talked about earlier to stay on while your support keeps your stamina up and your damage dealers beat the life out of this sadistic demon. In area three, there are two ways to do it. Either go for another mount, which is possible, or just go for a good old-fashioned enmity hold from a tank to allow the damage dealers to make the most out of the zone and do the required damage to make it through it. Assuming you have done everything right up until this point, I'm sorry, because the last zone is hell. Whatever you do, do not try to do an infinite mount or sleep bomb or anything bursty in this phase. Crossing two meteor thresholds back to back is just asking for trouble. The best way to deal with this zone is a straight up enmity hold. Everyone who is not the tank be aware that the tank cannot hold enmity 100% of the time. Save your mantles for when he doesn't have it and just keep yourself alive. Do damage during enmity, stay alive outside of it. This is the end of the fight, but so many things can go wrong in this phase. Take advantage of whatever time is left in your timer here. To recap, Extreme Behemoth fights in four zones. Place Charybdis on the side of the room, dodge meteors, dodge lightning, dodge ground eruption, place comets in good places and protect them, and help your friends as much as possible. Ecliptic Meteor happens five times throughout the fight. Escape it by hiding behind a comet with a well-timed jump gesture or by legging it far out of the zone. Whew. All right, let me catch my breath a second, because this fight really is extreme. This fight is fantastic. I hate it, but it's fantastic. It is an absolute challenge, and tons of people are unhappy with it. But that is honestly what it's meant to be. Objectively, this fight is entirely completable, and the rewards for completing the fight are 100% cosmetic. This is not even remotely meant to be a fight that every hunter can complete. It is a challenge designed for the people who want to undertake 
make a challenge, and there is very, very little you lose from avoiding it if you don't want said challenge. Sure, I can understand that you would be upset as they chose to do a fight that a few people will enjoy instead of putting in a fight that a lot of people will enjoy, but that is ultimately their decision, and the content updates are still 100% free. This fight contains something that World as a whole has been completely lacking, full-on challenge. Most monsters in this game are beaten by the average player in only a couple of attempts at most. While this makes for a fluid way to progress through the game, it doesn't quite live up to the end game of previous titles in the series. I have heard tales of people spending multiple days learning a hyper deviant monster only to just get that kill just barely and feel like a million bucks. And to me, that type of gameplay can be super rewarding if it isn't locking away any proper game content. And as this fight only rewards cosmetics, I am totally okay with this. Sure, this fight isn't really Monster Hunter in terms of its mechanics, but it does give this ultimate feeling of satisfaction when you finally get that kill. And just like with regular Behemoth, I think having too many of this in the game would be absurd and simply wrong. However, having just the one is awesome. Alright everybody, like the video if you liked the video, subscribe and hit the little notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet.